Hello everybody, it's me, Avon Plays, and I'm here with Kodiak Rex. More importantly, the robot that has replaced Kodiak Rex. Oh shit. <laughs> they took his job. Yep. So someone had to, I guess. <laughs> someone had to take your job. <laughs> someone had to. Yep. It was it was their job to take my job. What do you mean? Listen, when they when they talked about the uh, was it the AI uh, uprising, they perhaps didn't think it would be so literal. So if I recall, in the last uh, episodes of Dragon's Ball P, you had uh, found some kerosene and whatnot to be able to burn the bodies. Yes. There's an important question. Uh, in the event of a apocalypse of perhaps an unnamed variety. Would you think to burn the bodies? Mm. Unclear. Instructions unclear. Dick got caught in ceiling fan. That's the helmet key, and I have the armor key, I think. <clears throat> I mean, I can get closer to the microphone. What? Uh, uh, licorice is in the oh. chat saying that I'm a little quiet. <laughs> wow, I didn't know licorice learned how to type. Yep. Where is handsome? Handsome! Fine, baby bitch boy, don't be around for me to harass. <sighs> now I do not wish to save the web page. <laughs> Pure silliness, I tell you. I love when it does that. When you're like, hey, I would like to save specific thing mm -hmm. and it's like would you like to save the entire web page and i'm like that I was... <laughs> no <laughs> no i would not also i'm not even sure what good that does because it's never worked it's n never once have I been like, I know, I'll save this entire web page instead of, like, placing a bookmark or, you know, just remembering the web page. Mm hmm. See, I thought the point was going to be that, like, you would save, excuse me, that instance of the web page mm -hmm. so that you could access it without uh internet i don't 
but I don't no, that's how it works. That isn't how it works, because this is something I uh, I learned. I guess we'll call it that several years ago. So I'm like, what even is the point of this? And there is there is no point as far as I can tell. Cause it doesn't do that. You can just use bookmarks. Giving it, I'm giving it a shrug, basically. down easy <laughs> <laughs> oh no it me damn it that one's a helmet one too looks like I left something behind downstairs though Turn around, Jill. Oh, hi. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, that was inconvenient. Snake, answer me. Snake, snake. Tee -hee. I didn't expect there to be another one down the hall that just hadn't noticed me yet. <laughs> Fear can't kill you, but fucking zombies can. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> you know, as it happens, I, uh, I didn't. <laughs> God, I need a mod for this game where, like, every time you're switching, like, camera angles, you can actually, like, physically see the old camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just completely and utterly destroys any sort of immersion. Every time you die, someone loudly is like, Cut! <laughs> Also, I don't know if you went back and watched uh, the opening area of the Hell Hellblade stream, uh -uh. Uh, but I, when you stepped away the first time, uh, or sorry, the second time, I told a story of how earlier that week I got angry enough to have like a physical eye twitch, uh -huh. which I've always done like ironically or like unironically rather. Um, 
No, what am I trying to say? Like, I, I, I always do it on purpose. Like, it's not involuntary. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first time I've ever had a voluntary or involuntary <laughs> eye twitch. <laughs> uh, however, I think because your headphones were on the desk, uh, I was listening back to it earlier today, and I almost didn't notice uh, in the moment how much of like a ghostly echo it gives the story <laughs> and makes it like so much more dramatic than it actually is. Wow. Last time he went down and won. How inconsiderate. See, Jill, this is why you need to use yeah. 45 ACP. Nine millimeter just kills the bomb. Forty-five ACP kills the soul. What bullet in gun? Green herb. Green is the color of the herb. gag like 10 minutes ago <laughs> come here oh oh no dad picked you up what happened do you want to type do you want to type something come on <laughs> he's trying to get away <laughs> okay hi handsome boy what tell me everything hmm? handsome Licorice. Talk to me, dude. Baby boy. <gasps> yeah. Uh huh. You got good stories. <gasps> and some. Yeah. Dude, take a hint.
I'm happy for you. Oh. Oh yeah, he's coming. Jesus, dude. Damn. is a good question like undoubtedly if you made a broth from like magic mushrooms um <laughs> like clearly it would get you like completely fucking outer spaced however i am <laughs> curious like would it They're on taste the list. good <laughs> would they taste good I don't know, like what would broth made from magic shrooms taste good? It would probably taste like whatever they taste like. I mean, maybe. I've been told they actually, like, don't taste terribly awesome. That wouldn't surprise me. I would look this up, but... <laughs> you could probably get me on a list. Then I think about the rest of the research that I've done for uh, writing things or my videos. Mm -hmm. I'm probably already on that list, so. <laughs> I mean, they can't fault you for being curious. Freeze! Drop it! What? Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> it said none of those things. They knew. Oh. Oh? Taste and texture of shrooms can cause nausea for some people. Oh. Uh, they have a distinctly unpleasant taste. Uh, this is because <laughs> of natural compounds within the mushrooms called psy psilocybin and psilocin. Uh, taste bitter, which can be overpowering and unpleasant for some people. Hmm. Oh, and of course, you can't remove the thing that makes it taste bitter because that's the thing that makes you trip fucking balls. Yeah, which makes sense because uh, most uh, like interesting drugs, not like you know drugs, drugs like. Yeah. Drugs. The the clinical definition of drugs, uh, drugs taste bitter naturally. Sure. Drugs. Because if <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna quote the drugs owl for the next forty five minutes now. Uh. We have evolved to taste things that might be dangerous as bitter. Sure. Yeah, my coffee is so fucking delicious. <laughs> there has got to be something. Um. So before I get on to the next tangent, I just found that due to the bitter taste, um, humorously enough for those new to the experience, according to this uh, article I found, which I 
shan't be citing. Uh, apparently, it is often made in the form of a T. Mm. Then they can add like sugar and other components to make it less bitter. Right. Um. Anyway, so my whole persona online, uh, which for legal reasons is actually me. Um, however, we ended up looking up like, can bears have coffee? Like, is that uh, <laughs> like, is that like something that if I had a pet bear, I could like brew them a cup? Uh huh. And. It turns out that coffee is, uh, much like to many animals, toxic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and can cause death in high enough quantities. Which, uh, lends credence to my fucking animation tutorial video. <laughs> I fucking... I mean, in the, the whole joke of that, uh, thing was that it was just pure adrenaline instead of coffee. Yeah. But even so, like, it's just so fucking funny to me that I am just, a as a character, actively drinking something that is, like, going to kill me. So, I guess it could be the same for any that, alcoholic character. The thing about coffee is that, yeah, the plant has shit in it that is evolved to discourage things from eating it. Uh-huh. And we just happen to be one of Boy. the things that can tolerate that uh, compound. And so we just we were like, yeah. <laughs> to tolerate is such a funny way to put that, because I, I remind that like the human Dave, the the one talking right now, had a heart attack at twenty two from consuming too much coffee. Like, <laughs> it it is dangerous. <laughs> Make no mistake. Well, yeah, people people act like, damn it. People act like caffeine is like completely harmless doesn't do anything but keep you awake but uh that's not how that works <laughs> not uh not saying anyone should, uh, just quit the stuff lest they face my judgment. Sure. <laughs> just, uh, something to keep in mind. Well, yeah, we ended up looking it up, and the, the like, primary ingredient in most rat poisons is, humorously enough, caffeine. Mm hmm Have I told that story on your stream before? I know I've told it on mine. I could not remember. The the heart attack story? <laughs> yeah. I feel like you have, but I could have been I could the... be remembering your stream. Maybe. Um I guess to give a short recap, um 
So I I used to work in catering, and uh, if you know anything about catering, it is a nightmare meat grinder, um, particularly one that will just, I mean, absolutely grind you down and just completely, like, fuck up uh, any semblance of a sleep schedule or a social life or fucking any of it, right? My problem was that I, at the time working there, I had two jobs um, during this uh, one uh, just really, really fucking busy season. And, uh... <laughs> part of my problem was, uh... with, like, holiday caterings, especially, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, that time of year, um... you are starting, like, cold prep starting to cook things, getting things ready for just the sheer number of caterings you have at about two in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes it was closer to four. Sometimes you would get lucky and like, oh yeah, come in at six, right? Mm -hmm. It all really depended on how much stuff got done the previous night. Um, that being said, it was obviously the expectation that all of the dishes and as much prep as could be done the day before uh, got done. And... <sighs> working this second job sort of meant that I had, like, 45 minutes-ish between, like, ending my shift catering and heading to kind of where I needed to be uh, for the second job. And uh, I, I won't go into too much detail about that one, but... Uh, <laughs> it, Needless to say, it, it was a, a physically taxing job. <laughs> um, but, uh... I enjoy that Jesus, description. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> so, I would go do that work, um, and I would finish with roughly enough time to, like, go home and shower change clothes and <laughs> back me. into the catering place. And, uh, oh boy, I had done about four days of that. Oh. Okay. <sighs> this camera angle sucks because you just have no time to react. Ooh. Yeah, he ate that buckshot. Um, see, I had been awake for honestly the better part of almost 80 hours by this point. <laughs> let, let me tell you. You, I, I am not, like, a wildly pleasant person when I'm sleep-deprived. Um, a, a lot of my filters tend to just disappear. Um, but, you know, back then, I had a fairly okay grasp on it. <laughs> Enough so that, like, you know, my, my client wasn't like, concerned for me. Um, and my co-workers at the catering place weren't particularly concerned for me. Granted, when when the room is on fire, you're not really, like, focused on whether or not the 
your coworkers around you are like okay. <laughs> like you're you're focused on the fire. Um, right. And so I remember uh this this kind of fourth day. It was a Thursday. And uh back then like as far as my tolerance levels I could genuinely do a pot of coffee a day. Um, sometimes more, depending on how just complete and utter shit the whatever experience I was going through was. And uh, this this Thursday uh, in the morning, I show up to the catering place and I brew one pot. And as I'm prepping, I down it. And I don't mean that, like, I poured a cup and drank it, like, you know, sort of as I was prepping stuff and then would pour another cup, drink that, you know, put some cream or a little bit of sugar in there. No, I, I, I brought the carafe to my lips like a fucking mug. <laughs> And drank the entire pot of coffee. And I get a second one going. And I I go and do prep while that's doing its thing. Um, and I... I come back. I think I drank the second one and the third one a little more normally. Um, the fourth one... I absolutely, like, I was struggling, standing to, like, stay awake. Um, and, like, I I didn't even really care about the hot, like, liquid sort of, like, running down either side of my cheek. Like, I, I was fighting to stay awake. Um, there was absolutely no fucking like oh. adrenaline left in my body i had been taxed as far as oh jeez oh. 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 <laughs> good christ yeah i'm having a rough go of it today so it seems um But I drank that fourth pot. I I start brewing the fifth. And, you know, I got in maybe, maybe four in the morning. It's almost eight by this point. And I start, like, prepping the boiling water for a thing of, uh... Like, I think it was the soups, um, because we would get, like, the soups in bags. And so we would keep the bag of soup <laughs> in the boiling water to warm it up. Um, it is also worth mentioning, I could tell just food prep horror stories as far as, like, the way that certain foods are prepared. Uh, yeah. I am more than confident I could make people never want to eat at a restaurant ever again. <laughs> uh, small, small, tiny, like, heads up. Never order the manager's special, ever. Just don't the, do it. The manager's special? A at any restaurant, no matter where you go, like, doesn't matter if it's an Italian bistro, doesn't matter if it's Olive Garden, like, doesn't matter if it's fucking panda express like don't do not order the manager special the manager special is on discount nine times out of ten because it's only barely able to legally be sold <laughs> usually an ingredient within it if you know more often than not more than one is about to expire if not expired the day it was prepared. Gotcha. And so that's why they can 
sell it to you at such a discount is because technically they shouldn't. Um, so yeah, do not do not fucking order the manager special, no matter where you go. Um, so back to Kodiak and heart attacks. Um, I the last thing I remember is uh sort of getting the soup ready to go into the giant like 10 gallon boiling things of water the next thing I remember is waking up to the smelling salts of the paramedics over me and according to uh, my manager apparently I just dropped like a sack of potatoes um unresponsive like no one could fucking get anything out of me um so they called the paramedics you know they they showed up they did their thing um did not take long to figure out why <laughs> I had passed out and had a heart attack um but yeah. they recommended that I, you know, clock out, go to the hospital. Like, I, you know, I got up under my own power, so they weren't, like, forced to take me in the ambulance, which is good, because uh, for the non-American viewers, if you aren't already familiar, uh, ambulances are prohibitively expensive, and health insurance will not fucking pay for those. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and by... Okay, yes, yes, we know it was better. <laughs> um, like, uh, I remember having to help uh, a good friend of mine who was forced to take a ambulance ride. Um, it was, after everything was said and done, about $5,500. Yeah. yeah, the ambulances are not fucking cheap. Hey, I don't know what to do about that ash. I so it goes. It doesn't it doesn't um, seem to be something I have power over at the moment. I, if it's any consolation, everything looks good on my end. The sound is like a little delayed, but it's far from the end of the world. Yeah. Um. Oh shit. Oh shit. There we go. We found a place we haven't use been the, in yet. Use the mansion key. The mansion key. Um. Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Don't know why we got blackness for a second there, but. I fixed it, I guess. Yeah. Um. So all that being said, uh, I back then, um, I had sort of an impression that like, okay, I, for one, I was twenty two. I thought I was fucking invincible, <laughs> Mo mostly due to like four days of no sleep. Will just, uh kind of fucking do that to you. Uh-huh. Um. And so it goes. But <laughs> the other thing I sort of thought was like, I, you know, a, a dear friend of mine had gotten me this job and uh, I was sort of under the impression that like I... I would be doing them 
a disservice if I were to just like give up on it and leave. Um, hilarious foreshadowing for how I actually ended up leaving that job. But uh, the fucking what is it called? Um, no, the paramedics were like they were super nice. Um, you know, they're like since you got up, we we aren't required to take you in the in the ambulance but we do recommend you like go to a hospital get like some chest x-rays and like you know may maybe there's more going on here than uh just like four pots of coffee yeah and i'm like eh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> um so i talked to my boss and uh he was like yeah, uh, you can go home, but, uh, if you could be back by, like, 4 uh, p.m., <laughs> that would be great. And oh, I you. fucking was. <laughs> My hot, wet, dumb ass was back to work. That I love. I was like, yeah, I'll give a short recap, and then just told the fucking story in its entirety. Right. Um, I mean, you left out some details, but that's okay. Fair enough. <laughs> they they were details that uh, <laughs> maybe maybe. I I will say I reached out to that client to be like, hey. Um, I I had a heart attack. <laughs> like, I I probably won't be able to like meet up with you tonight, <laughs> just as a heads up. And what was incredibly shitty is they had been told that like what I was doing for them was my only job. Um, uh. They did not realize that like I had a day job because. You know, that the clientele services were happening, like, through the evening. Um, and then they were, like, sleeping through the day. And they presumed I had been sleeping through the day. This was not the case. Um. <laughs> I would, like, more irresponsibly than anything, I'm just fucking glad I didn't fall asleep at the wheel and, like, seriously hurt, like, someone else. It's like, everything else be damned. Like, if I hit a telephone pole, like, oh well, right? Like, sucks for me. But, uh, if I were to, like, fall asleep at the wheel and hurt someone else, like, I, I don't think I'd be able to live that down. Um, did I ever tell the toddler cake story? No, I... <laughs> I don't even know what to think of that title. Okay. So, th there were... <laughs> so, see previous, there were bad times catering, and there were good times catering. Um, this... I'll, I'll let... I'll let the viewer decide uh, where this one falls. So... Uh... Generally, with caterings, um, depend, pardon me, depending on how many people there were, would sort of dictate whether or not I would need to stay at the event in order to restock certain food items. Um, mashed potatoes, particularly, you know, the bane of my fucking existence. <laughs> because, uh, it was about like ra like rationing wise about half a pound of mashed potatoes per person so for a 80 person catering that's 40 pounds of mashed potatoes mm -hmm. like fine i can fit 40 pounds of mashed potatoes in a chafing dish now make no mistake i was a dangerous individual with that, like, burning chafing dish of 40 pounds worth of mashed potatoes. 
um, Trevor's Diary. <laughs> <laughs> November 24th, 1967. 11 days have passed since arriving on this estate. How do I end up like this? A guy in a lab coat brought me a message, a, a meager plate of food, and said, Sorry to put you through this, but it's for security reasons. That's when it hit me. It all makes sense now. There are only two people that know the secret of this mansion. Sir Spencer and myself. If they kill me, Sir Spencer will be the only person that knows the secret. By the laws of deduction, <laughs> I have surmised that there are two people who know of this mansion. And if one dies, then only one will know. <laughs> for what purpose? It doesn't matter now. It's too dangerous here. My family, dot, dot, dot. I hope they're all right. Oh, was I not supposed to read the dot, dot, dot? I've decided to escape. Dot, dot, dot. Jessica, Lisa, I pray you are safe. November 26, 1967. How could I be so careless? I lost my favorite lighter, the one Jessica gave me for my birthday. Now it's going to be that much harder to escape this dark place. November 13th, the date when my fate was sealed. My aunt was hospitalized just three days before that. Jessica and Lisa said that they were going to visit her. I wish I could be there with them. But wait, even as I'm writing, my memory is coming back to me more vividly. Just before I passed out, I remember the men in lab coat said something like, most likely your family is already dot dot dot. I pray for their safety and wonder why they said dot 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 out loud. November 27th, 1967. Somehow I managed to get out of that room, but getting out of this mansion won't be easy. I have to get past all these booby traps. Tiger eyes, gold emblem. I have to try to remember for my own sake. Not really. All right, so you, uh, catering dish foo. Yes, so, um, more than, like, 40 pounds of mashed potatoes in a chafing dish wasn't happening. Um, like, physically it was overtopping. Like, not to mention the weight of, like, you know, a chafing dish full of, like, just overtopping with mashed potatoes. Anywho, so if it was more than 80 people and, like, you know, portions couldn't fit in a single set of, like, chafing dishes, then I would have to stay on site with, like, a heating box. And whenever the rations got low, I would have to, like, butt my way in line and, uh, replace the dish. Now, as far as I'm concerned... That was my entire job description. That was the end of it. Um, mm -hmm. I would, you know, I was worried about my dishes, company equipment, and, like, if I had time and the people were nice, I would help them set up their stuff. I would, you know, carry stuff or help set up chairs or help take down chairs, etc. Um, like, you know, I was not opposed inherently to helping people set up their weddings or their events or whatnot. Um, including the time I horrifically, uh, I absolutely stopped assuming what events were for after this, because they didn't fucking tell me. It was, you know, I had a receipt that just had what food they ordered. Uh -huh. I was not told specifically what the event was. And so, uh, I remember looking at this mom at one point as uh, she was helping me set up stuff. And I was like, so so who were the lucky pair, assuming it was uh, a wedding? Uh -huh. And she just kind of coldly looks at me and was like, it's my son's funeral. And I was like, okay, uh, yeah, we're <laughs> never talking ever again. <laughs> Pardon me, ma'am, as I go into the bathroom of this church and tickle the back of my throat with my Glock. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, so 
I get to this different wedding and it it's kind of chaotic. You know, people are rushing around setting stuff up and of particular note is a six tier wedding cake. Mm -hmm. Now, for those unfamiliar with the field, um, cakes are not cheap, especially tiered wedding cakes. Um, I, I have a family member who is someone who makes cakes professionally. I described this cake to them because I, I never got like a, a like dollar amount on how much this cake cost. Uh -huh. Um, but talking to my family member, they said, yeah, I would charge about a thousand for that. So in in that rough ballpark. Um, now, you know, people it's kind of before they've started serving food. Um, people are meandering around. Some people are gathered. Uh, a lot of the kids are just like running around, uh, you know, playing in this like giant backyard that we were in. Mm -hmm. Now, it's worth describing that the tables we had set up on uh, were on like a patio and they had a special uh, round table for this tiered wedding cake. Damn, he got his ass. Yeah, I found um, the boom muscle. They had it. I mean, 12 gauge will just kind of do that to a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so they had found a three legged round table uh, to put this cake on. And their patio was sort of accented by these, like, roughly chest height like probably five five and a half foot tall uh little like pine trees um like the little the little tiny like windbreaker guys mm -hmm. and so with these tiny tiny windbreaker guys um you know there, there was about a foot gap between each of these trees and they butt this round table right up against where the trees are you know they put the cake on it i set up my catering on the opposite side and i, I at this point i'm waiting for them to start serving um you know no no one's really come through yet but uh you know, the, <laughs> the the bride and the groom are, like, chatting with people. They're getting stuff ready. And I can't help but notice that there's this particular toddler. Could not have been older than two and a half. Um, you know, blonde, in a little, like, suit that barely fit him. This poor kid. Um, and the, the sort of thing about catering is people don't really pay attention to you. You just kind of become a decoration when you're, like, standing there. Um, right. You only really become an object of their fascination. Uh, oh, yeah, what the fuck? No, thank <laughs> you, guy. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I will banish you to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, don't. As soon as I remember I love that they, how. they paused just short of actually including a link, knowing that that would probably get fucking auto-modded. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure it would. Uh, Anywho. So this little kid's running around, and
There we go. There we go. There it is. Um. So I'm watching this little kid as he's like trying to play with the other groups of kids, but they're like older, um, you know, mm. five or six. And they, you know, they want nothing to do with this little toddler that's running around. Yeah. And f fair enough, none of the adults wanted anything to do with this little toddler that was running around. But I'm keeping an eye on him because he keeps glancing at this giant cake. Right. <laughs> you know, I can I, I can see the cogs turning. I, I can see plotting and scheming. And. Uh, on the one hand, I'm like. Internally sort of in this battle with myself, like, OK. Do I say something like do I go over and stop this kid from like trying to do anything to the cake? Right. Do do I wave down a different, more responsible looking adult and gesture <laughs> them at the child? Um, uh -huh. And I sort of look around and no one else seems to be paying attention to this kid. And he gets closer to the cake. And I decide to take the route of let's see where this goes. And here is where it went. Uh huh. He walked up and uh, or waddled, I guess I should say. He waddles up and he tries jumping, you know, that that comical little like tiny jump that toddlers do. They just don't have enough like leg strength to to quite do it. Yeah. So he can't get the height that he's trying to get. But I see the cogs turning. And he notices these aforementioned pine trees, the little like spruces or whatever. And I see this idea form in his head. And I watch him waddle around to the back behind where uh, these trees were. I take a second moment to look around yeah. and uh, ponder okay, should should I do something? <laughs> should, should I, uh, you know, like, all right, if you're a parent, right, and this fucking weirdo who came and set up the food is suddenly, like, leading your child away by the arm. Like, mm -hmm. You know, that, that sets off alarm bells. That, that causes issues. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not a, like, A, I'm not about to go, like, shoo this child away. Because it's not my fucking job. My job is not to babysit these kids. Of course. My job is the food, right? And I will keep kids away from the chafing dishes because those have, you know, fire on the bottom of them. <laughs> yeah. So keeping little toddlers from like reaching their fingers in for the pretty blue flame, <laughs> like no, no, like that that I'm responsible for, right? That I can be like shoot. Um. But I'm not responsible for this cake. I'm not responsible <laughs> for this kid. And let's see where this goes. So I keep watching, and sure enough. He uses a grip on the, like, tablecloth that they put on the round table, as well as, like, using the branches of these little spruce trees to get himself a little more elevation so that he could get up at this cake. Mm hmm. And... I remember watching as the dominoes stacked <laughs> because he got a high enough uh, like he got high enough 
that he could actually like use his arms to like start leaning onto the little table. But uh-huh. he's like trying to kick his uh he's trying to kick his foot up to like get it so that he could stand on the table and admire this cake. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I watch him kick out that third leg. (laughs) And because of where the third leg was, he and the table and the cake fall back into the bushes. Forrest Uh, has given up the ghost, huh? No, not Forrest. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> what kind of fucking grenade launcher is that? What the hell? Uh, let's take a look. <laughs> what in the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, there, there are pieces of, like, real guns. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it's awesome. not that's like awesome. uh, the other games where you're like, oh, that's just uh, this. What, what is yeah. this, like a Frankenstein launcher? So what I need you to know is you remember like the assault rifle that uh, Dude Bro was using in the previous game? Uh-huh. So the pistol grip, the little lower section, and the stock yeah. are all part of that pattern of rifle. Yeah. The front tube and like the little area that the foregrip is attached to. Uh huh. So not only is it uh, ribbed for her pleasure, but <laughs> on the real grenade launcher that this is a part of, the M203, that's the part that slides open to allow you to put another grenade in. Uh huh. So why it is here, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in this presumably semi-automatic fucking grenade launcher makes no goddamn sense. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just a Frankenstein of a bunch of different platforms and with a, like, a weird custom magazine. Interesting. Now, make no mistakes, there are rotary grenade launchers like this. Yeah, I mean, I don't, we've seen I don't them. know... Yeah, we've seen them. I don't know if due to, like, licensing issues or, like, custom whatnot. No, wait, hang on. I'm taking a second look at that ribbed for her pleasure section. Uh Uh-huh. Those are rails. Those are rail covers. My apologies. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So then, hang on, because that's the style of rail. This is literally just like an AR-15 that you turned into a grenade launcher. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dumb as hell. My guess is they uh, were like, we need a gun for reference. And they're like, we don't have a grenade launcher. Uh-huh. So they just, like, drew some, like, the, grenade the launcher internet, shit. The internet went down so they couldn't look up <laughs> any fucking grenade launchers. They're like, well, shit, Greg's got good ideas, and they look over at Greg, and he's just like, <laughs> and draws this. But, uh, yeah. Like, thanks. Thanks, zombie Greg. Blue. Um, Louis the Fourteenth. Some people do need to <laughs> learn to watch their kids. Yes. Um, so to, f- to finish out the, the toddler cake story, um, the... So everything goes quiet. And my first order of business is to look around and make sure that nobody saw that I could have done something about this and chose not to. <laughs> that That is my first order of business. <laughs> Fair enough, honestly. Um, I confirm that the coast is clear and my job is not in danger. Yoink. 
Um, I didn't want to do it, Forrest. I'm sorry, Forrest. Thanks for the grenade um, launcher, though. Yeah, what a guy. What a Chad. But I confirm that <clears throat> my career is not in danger. And uh, the first noise that kind of breaks the silence is the bride shrieking. Yeah, as you do. <laughs> the entire event descends into chaos as the toddler and the mother, husband, and two other kids of the, you know, this small family are pretty much, like, manually forced out of the yard. Um, yeah. I later came to find out that, uh, that was, uh, the bride's sister. Oh. Uh. And, uh, yeah, costing them a thousand, potentially thousand dollar wedding cake is one of those things where I'm just like, I mean, family is family, but like, watch your fucking kids. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, get a better uh, cable, cable for the Something that expensive should be on the most stable table you can find. You think they would stable find table. the most stable table? <laughs> My band has a new name. <laughs> um, you think they would have found a more stable table, but no, but no, they, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they they spent all their money on the cake. They didn't have enough left over for a good table. For, for a good stable table. But, uh, yeah, um, oh god, there was, uh, so the funniest wedding I've ever been to, <laughs> um, and I actually wasn't catering for this one, um, I went with my, uh, my ex, <laughs> my ex-partner, uh, we'll call her Katie, because that's her name. And <laughs> it was a friend of hers. That, that, that joke never gets old. <laughs> um, uh, it was a friend of hers who uh, was getting married. And it was in a church. Uh, for those who aren't in Utah or familiar with Utah culture, um, say what you will about the Mormon church. They will offer you that, like church venue for free they do not care um and considering the conditions that a lot of people get married under having a free venue means you get to have a lot like nicer stuff um you know better food better cake a stable table you know you can afford all kinds of things if the venue is free right um, so you, you know even if you're not a member of the church like they will still offer those services to you. Um, and so, as part of it, these churches often have uh, audio systems. They have, like, internal speakers and different things. And there is a whole, like, control panel for interfacing with this audio. For whatever reason, they could not get the laptop that they brought to interface. Like, it wouldn't connect it wouldn't work the only thing they could get to work was uh the mother of the groom's phone and they were doing the whole ceremony or made the whole ceremony the whole reception they were doing everything there and uh you know we we get into position we get into seats and uh you know, the, the the dad is getting ready to, like, walk his daughter down the aisle. You know, special moment. And they're getting ready to play the wedding march. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've queued it up on Spotify. Mm -hmm. 
And they, you know, everyone stands up as uh, the bride and uh, her father, you know, get, get into position and get ready. And immediately from the speakers, with Spotify Premium, you can... <laughs> and so here's the thing about this. Um, like, okay, the wedding march is on Spotify, right? I get that. Mm. But d dear, like, ad runners of Spotify, <laughs> please, please point to one person that has, like, the wedding march as just part of their, like, daily chores playlist. Like, this does not strike me as something that is played, you know, outside of, like, special occasions or events. You know, mm -hmm. weddings. So why Spotify decided to play a ad before the wedding march, I will never know. Dog. But it stops because the mom, panicking, like, closes and shuts off her phone. Uh-huh. So now the entire assembly hall, all like almost 200 people are gathered in complete stark silence. <laughs> Except for me, who was fucking hyena cackling. <laughs> because it was the funniest goddamn shit I have ever participated in. <laughs> I couldn't fucking believe that Spotify would play an ad before the wedding march. I I was so flabbergasted the only reaction I could muster was cackling. Mm -hmm. And uh make no mistake, my partner was pissed. <laughs> and understandably so. But oh god, I was apparently the only one that found it funny. I I don't believe that. Like not I'm like I don't not like they think you're lying. Like, that's sure. crazy. <laughs> to this day, the funniest fucking wedding I have ever participated in. <laughs> my, my girlfriend was fucking silent the entire drive home. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just, I remember looking over. I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, it just, it's fucking funny. She's like, it's really not. And I'm like, but, but it really is. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> How fucking absurd. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty silly to think. That, uh, someone might, I don't know, like, just casually listen to, uh... <laughs> the, the... Yeah, what, what, what kind of serial killer has that as, like, part of the jogging <laughs> playlist? <laughs> what absolute fucking psychopath is just like, I'm doing the dishes. I know, I'll put on some music. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> it's also pretty funny that they didn't, you know, anticipate that they might try to play an ad either before or after the song. I, yeah. When you're, like, it's a wedding... Buy a month of premium. <laughs> well, and this, again, like, they had all the music and, like, all the playlists and stuff, like, physically saved as MP3s on the laptop. Well, but they couldn't, they couldn't get that to connect for whatever reason. I, I know, I get that. But I mean, when you're presented with this situation where you have to improvise <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, song 
why why don't you just like spend the like yeah. what is it seven bucks for or, Spotify yeah. for one the month? The four hundred and twenty dollars and sixty nine cents a year, yeah. Uh. Just for this one, this one occasion, just. <laughs> just one time. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe just fucking this one time. I don't know, Aaron. The, ne the next time I'm at a wedding and the fucking laptop won't connect, I'll, <laughs> I'll advise, hey, maybe buy <laughs> some fucking Spotify Premium. Or better yet, here's my phone. I have Spotify Premium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, humorously enough, a lot of, like, my time catering weddings and attending weddings is a lot of the reason that even though I got married, I didn't want a fucking wedding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, I fuck it. That too many, too many fucking variables, right? Too many other people that can just be like, yeah, we'll do the thing. Or, hey, I know, like, it's their day, but... I, if I don't have attention on me for five minutes, I'm going, I'm literally going to die. So, yeah, needless, I, I didn't feel at all bad about not having a wedding. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> I, rem I remember calling my grandma the morning of... Like, hey, just a heads up, this is happening. Uh, I figured it was better to tell you beforehand than it was afterhand. Um, and she was like, uh, can, can we come? And I was like, no. No. <laughs> like, like, no, no, no one's coming. Like, we're, we're doing it at the courthouse. Like, it's, it's fine. Like, if you guys want to, like, do a dinner for us, if you absolutely have to do something... Like, we, we're not asking anyone to do anything, right? Like, be happy for us, and etc. But as far as, like, physically planning an event, like, don't. Don't. Like, that, that's not what... That, don't. Like, we'll do, we'll do a Sunday dinner, that'll be lovely, and that'll be the end of it, right? And to, to their credit, that's exactly what happened. So, good for them. Good. But... Does this goddamn key open? <laughs> the world may never know. I've checked, like, all the doors. Um, it wasn't a wedding necessarily, but uh, another catering story that comes to mind, which is probably the closest I've ever come to wanting to but not taking human life. Uh, so I growing up, you know, my my grandma um you know, you, you'll you'll all remember her uh, fondly from the story twenty some odd seconds ago. <laughs> uh, so she she grew up in like Great Britain. Um, I, I know, I know. Um, that being said, hilariously oxy, like as a hilarious oxymoron, she's an amazing chef. Um, and actually taught me a lot of what I know about cooking. And uh, I, you know, one thing she had sort of taught me was in in foreign countries, uh, you don't really get the thing where they put salt and pepper on the table. Mm -hmm. um, 
putting salt and pepper on the table is kind of an American thing. Um, in other countries, if you ask for salt and pepper, it's seen as like an insult to the chef. And I'd never really, I'd never really gotten that. Um, like, you know, it, it, it's salt and pepper, right? Like different people have different levels of taste. And so it makes sense that different people might want more salt or more pepper, you know? Well, Karma decided uh, to rear its ugly head in this particular catering. <gasps> the shield oh, key! It opens exactly one door. This one. <laughs> this door. Discard. Yes. See ya. Um, the spider so, door. It was another catering where uh, I had to, like, fucking... Uh, Oh yeah, my, those pork chops are fucking signature. Um, I still have yet to like dial in the oven that I have now. And snack. oh, that's oh, snick. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh fuck. The stakes are significantly higher. The snakes are significantly <laughs> higher. Payback time. <laughs> I love the snakes. Just a single flying fuck. <laughs> Couple of grenades did the trick. God damn. Yeah, that'll do it. Thanks. Yeah, no oh thanks. man, he got bored. Uh, um. This thing. So this was another all of my catering. Dreams. Oh boy. This is this was oh. another catering where I had to like sit there and babysit the dishes. There he goes. Bye Snake. Yeah. Bye Snake. Bye Richard. You two have fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh um, free shotgun. Free shotty. Um, I remember watching this older lady. She easily, easily could have been like 65 or 70. Um, she gets her plate of food and she gets to the end of the line. And generally, uh, with our catering setup, we would put, uh, salt and pepper at the very end of the line. And I remember watching her just, like, she picks up the salt shaker and she's sitting there for a couple of seconds. Oh, am I poisoned? And then, oh boy. <laughs> she looks less poisoned and more hungover. <laughs> I, had, I had some of that magic mushroom broth that <laughs> the snake took me some magic mushroom broth um <clears throat> anyway so you know she's sitting there for what on, like I didn't count because I was just fucking flabbergasted but mm. it honestly felt like about 30 seconds of her just murdering her plate with salt. Just <laughs> everything on there. And, you know, that, like, on its own, I was like, okay, 
you know, she's older. Maybe she can't like taste too good. So <laughs> okay, like I I can I can calm myself down with the understanding that uh you know, may, maybe her taste buds just aren't what they used to be. Well, I'm cleaning up after the catering's done. And she waddles up to me. And you know that thing where, like, old people grab you by the back of the bicep? <laughs> yes. She, she does that shit. And is like, sweetie, it was very good. Uh, I just have to say it was a little salty. And I could have killed her and felt nothing. <laughs> like, I, I'm sitting there wide-eyed like, yeah? A little salty, huh? Okay, I'll keep that in mind, ma'am. <laughs> like, oh my god, I was angry. I, like, I'm getting angry now thinking <laughs> back on that. <laughs> Lady, oh my fucking god. <laughs> Oh, God, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe she had like dementia, and she like kept forgetting she added salt, I, and I, uh, <laughs> I fucking kept I fucking adding hope, more. <laughs> hope so, but then how did she have like the cognizance and the wherewithal to waddle over to my hot <laughs> wet ass and remember that it was too salty? <laughs> like, there's no situation. That's not infuriating. <laughs> There's no situation where I'm not just mad as hell about that entire fucking thing. Oh. Speaking of like catering stories, now that I've like reopened this wound, um, mm. did like did I ever <laughs> did I ever tell you guys about the cinnamon honey butter theft? No. <laughs> That sounds hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, typically, like, the the catering place I worked at was also a bakery. Like, we baked all our own bread, our, all our own rolls, bread bowls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and typically, with, like, our bread trays, we would serve cinnamon honey butter. It was technically cinnamon honey margarine, but we're not splitting hairs. Um, it consists of three ingredients in what I can only describe in horrifying quantities. Mm -hmm. You would start with, if I recall, <laughs> it was about five gallons of margarine, mm -hmm. um, about three gallons of honey, and I, I don't know if you've seen those like Costco things of cinnamon no but i can it, imagine everything is bigger at costco it is about like I, i'm trying to think of a good like rough size comparison you could fit this amount of cinnamon in like a one liter mountain dew bottle <laughs> and you would just dump all three of those into like the industrial bread mixer and just let it go. Mm -hmm. And it would create just gallons upon gallons of fucking cinnamon honey butter. And the shit was fucking delicious. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, absolutely no, like, contest or question about that. The shit was good. Um, typically, people would, like, spread it on the bread. Right. Makes sense. And this absolute hero. I was at this <laughs> catering for, like, a company. And this absolute fucking hero. Uh, you know, all his co-workers have formed a line. This guy, this guy wants none of that shit, right? He, he's tired of lines. He's tired of waiting, right? This guy would not have done well in the USSR. <laughs> now, I've had to, like, snip at people cutting in line before. Like, it sucks, but it's kind of a reality of people being 
Awesome. Right. Oh boy. Um, you know, I've had to snip at people for cutting in line before. This guy, uh, he comes in at about the bread. Oh shit. And he starts eyeing this crock of cinnamon honey butter. Now, a crock, uh, this specific one, um, I want you to imagine, like, a hearty bowl of soup. Uh-huh. That's about how much cinnamon honey butter is here. And... That sounds like a lot. It, it was a lot. Uh, it was about 45 ounces of cinnamon honey butter, and we usually filled those crocs to overflowing. Um, just typically for, you know... And again, it, it, it adjusted based on how much bread there actually was. But this guy cuts in line. This absolute rippling chested Giga Chad. Cuts in line and is eyeing the cinnamon honey butter. I watch him pick up one of the plastic knives that is in there for the purpose of someone to, like, scoop out a generous helping and spread it over their bread. Right. He picks up one of these knives. It's got a, a generous helping. And this motherfucker puts it right in his mouth. <laughs> and you know what? Good for him, because I am ready to fly across the table to stop him from putting the knife that was just in his mouth back in the trunk <laughs> of cinnamon honey butter. Yep, yep, yep. He doesn't do that. He uses his other hand to pick up the crock of cinnamon honey butter. <laughs> he then looks me in the eyes turns around and leaves <laughs> he just leaves I guess he wagered that I would be too stunned to do anything <laughs> and he was right and he was standing there flabbergasted like someone just stole all the cinnamon honey butter in front of my face! <laughs> like, All I, of it. I, I'm... Oh. Like, there's a part of me that, like, my fight response has been activated. Like, go, go hunt this motherfucker down. Like, you can't let that shit slide. Like, <laughs> if all his co-workers see that you just let him walk <laughs> off with the cinnamon honey butter, then... Like, they're just going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, I can just take this chafing dish or the chafing lid. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. These salad tongs. Yeah, these are mine now. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it, right? So I, I, I'm i just blown away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, like, to this day, uh, it, it keeps me up at night. Because I know what he did. Like, <laughs> unquestionably, he took the knife and the crock of cinnamon honey butter and he went, like, back to his office and ate it. Like, uh -huh. fine, great, whatever. What I'm haunted by is that that is only option one of what happened with the cinnamon honey butter. Mm-hmm. I'm also horrified by, like, none of his co-workers were like, Hey, Greg, what the fuck? Like, this, to them, seemed like a fucking Tuesday. <laughs> like, this was just normal Greg behavior. Damn. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, fuck you, dog. GFY yourself, dog. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that motherfucker still keeps me up at night. It's worth noting, I never got the croc back. Like, mm-hmm. when I, like, I left to go, like, clean up a different catering, and I came back, and everything but that crock of cinnamon honey butter was there. And I'll, like, wow. I, I just kind of wrote it off. I'm like, yeah, that's the cost of doing business, I guess, <sighs> is some guy steals the fucking cinnamon honey butter right in front of your face, and you're too flabbergasted to do anything about it. Oh, jeez. Excuse me, gentlemen. Beg your pardon. Coming through. Don't mind me. Um. Yeah, so that still keeps me up at night. <laughs> Oh my god, the Algrotten lady. Oh. <laughs> so, um, for anyone unfamiliar, BYU, uh, Brigham Young University, is like the one of the colleges that's here in Utah. Um, some of the people that go there, I could charitably describe as neurotic. And I remember I was in the middle of like setting up this catering for just like a small business class. And this this lady who is not the lady who ordered the catering storms up to me and demands to know why I did not bring uh, funeral potatoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Funeral potatoes, also known as Au Gratin, is cheesy hash brown potatoes. Like, you know, pre- pretty simple, pretty delicious stuff. And I kind of step back and I'm like, uh, I, I beg your pardon? And she's like looking through the chafing dishes and everything. And she's like, you didn't bring any au gratin. How could you forget? And I'm kind of stuck, like... It, is this a bit? Are we doing a bit right now? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm lost. Um, I ask some questions and I find out that she is not doing a bit. She is 100% dead serious. Pissed at me <laughs> for not bringing Al Groton to a taco bar. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, yes, tortillas, ground beef with taco seasoning, refried beans, a fucking Spanish rice. How could I possibly forget the Au Gratin? How fucking silly of me. (laughs) And, uh, you know, she stormed off in a huff, and I remember asking the person who actually ordered the catering... Like, hey, uh, (coughs) just checking the receipt here. I, I don't see that any Al Groton was ordered, but you had someone who was very upset that I did not bring Al Groton. And she just kind of pinched the bridge of her nose and was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't think she would get to you. I'm like, oh, she got to me. I wonder where that lady is. Uh Oh.
I didn't mean to do that. Obviously, that means forest. we need to go. <laughs> Are these wind vanes? What do they mean? What does it mean? When the <clears throat> dog's desires are fulfilled. fulfilled. What does that mean? <laughs> the fuck are you on about? I also remember I had a co-worker who uh, got avidly pissed at me mm -hmm. because uh, I had taken my lunch break and uh, had proceeded to, uh, you know, sit down with the sandwich that I made myself. Um, and he comes over and he sits down next to me and watches as, uh, nice, um, <clears throat> as I pull out my phone and I pull up a game to pass the time mm -hmm. and it was a kitchen management game. <laughs> and he's like, I'm sorry, are you taking a break from your job where you cook food to play a game where you cook food? <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> like, it's my fucking lunch break. I'll do what I fucking want. <laughs> oh, wait, bird. Fucking assholes. Nobody even invited you. Oh yeah, there was the <clears throat> the wedding I catered where the groom just fucking never showed up. Yeah. That do happen sometimes. Not much to that one, just like I set everything up, you know, people started kind of rushing around before the ceremony. I asked what was going on, you know, so that I could, like, lend a hand if there was a hand that needed to be lent. And, uh, yeah, no one could get a hold of him, and he wasn't on the premises. So... Yeah, poor, poor bride just, like, fucking sat there and cried for a couple hours. Well, I mean, they, they weren't gonna waste all the food that I had, like, taken the time to set up, so... They, uh, did that. A map. It's a map, it's a map, it's a map.
map of the courtyard. A family picture. It's a picture of a family. There's a journal left by someone. It's a journal of the family. <clears throat> 19, dad to D, attached, first mom attached, second, inside, red and slimy, white and hard. Not true mom wear. What is this, my immortal? <laughs> Dunno, Dad. Found Mum again. When attached, Mummy, she move no more. She screaming. Why? Just want to be with her. For Mom, where? I miss you all. <laughs> you all. Fre Raven, fangs for to good revows. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I had an ink ribbon, I could save my progress. If you had an ink ribbon. Oh, look, an ink ribbon. <laughs> Come on in here. Come on in here. <laughs> Wow, a crank. I don't know where I'll use a crank, but I bet I'll use a crank. Maybe the game. I heard crane at first. Just <laughs> the thought of. Jill, like, climbing up into a giant <laughs> Oops. Oh shit. <laughs>
There we go. And now there are zombies. <laughs> Damn, okay. Dramatic. There were zombies. Hey, birds. I did done been murdered. I done been murdered by Birded. You, you got mortalized. The birds were like, fuck you. And I was like, fuck you too, birds. And the birds were like, no you. <laughs> What's your name? Birds. What's yours? Aaron. <laughs> nope. Donk. Uh, hey, Aaron. Yeah, birds. Go fuck yourself. Fuck <laughs> you, too. Oh, she's a shambling. Oh. Uh -oh. I, uh, take it we've just met the author of My Immortal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, we found him after all this time. After all this time. That guy just didn't help it. He exploded. to be the goddamn bees.
step. <laughs> Item. a button that's what it was that's what it was <laughs> so so it would seem ah fuck you birds Gun. The Silver Serpent. Let's check this out. Silver Serpent 357 Magnum. mute button. I was gonna say, that is a massive ass revolver for just being 357. But... Oh yeah? How big is a 357? I mean, 357 is like a respectable caliber, it's just, I remember when we first saw that one, uh, I was under the impression it was a 454 Casul, which is a much, much larger revolver round. Mm. No. Why no? The world may never know. Bread. Anything. Jill to Brad. Bread, Jill. Can you hear me? Shit. It's broken. Wow. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you have? A knife. God damn it, I need an edit of that now that's like, what do you have? A gun! <laughs> a gun. That's a hole. <laughs> Let's go for a swim. Oh, there's where I need the crank. Just have to walk back to the supply box. Remember, it's not murder, it's called retirement. Sometimes you've just got to cancel someone's subscription to living. But I have a lifetime subscription. Not according to this funny little remote I have. <laughs> 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 Not according to this funny little remote I have. Aha. Uh -huh. Well done. Thanks. The important part is clarifying that it's all in Minecraft. Everything's in Minecraft. Even the things that aren't in Minecraft. Truly. Now they don't know what to think. Kodiak, are all of your death threats in Minecraft? <laughs> oh, silly child. I don't mean that. Too bad we can't swim. There are enough bikini mods to fill this pool. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> I fucking guess. <laughs> Just come out here to like a shitload of A posing Jills. <laughs> Just hanging out. <laughs> One bikini clad berry. You know, for a little spice. I'm glad somebody put this bridge inside of the pool. That's so nice of them. So considerate. <laughs> so just thought of like Barry in a bikini licking his revolver, and I'm there like, please, God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you want titanium poisoning? This is how you get fucking titanium poisoning. <laughs> how much titanium until you get the titanium poisoning? I don't actually know, but I will tell you that the first ever documented case of titanium poisoning was from a World War I French soldier who uh, took the bolt out of his rifle and had his squad mates uh, pour wine down the barrel into his mouth. <laughs> Look, you birds! I'm standing here as a casual reminder that stereotypes are just hurtful facts. That looks dangerous. How many bites could you take out of an A-10 Warthog before you got titanium poisoning? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just imagining someone sitting there just like gnawing on the wing. A <laughs> uh, snake. A snake, a snake, ooh, it's a snake. It's a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of. Do you know that animation is 20 fucking years old? No. Yep. Yeah, it just, like, the Mr. Weeble released a, like, 20 year anniversary animation, and I was like, no. No, it hasn't been 20 <laughs> fucking years. But it has. Oh, but it has. You lie. <laughs> You're like, I'm not lying, I'm just teleporting. <laughs> Sorry to be... Are you familiar with Up Is Not Jump? No. Oh, god damn, I have another amazing YouTuber to show you. It's just, he, he has a teleporting gag that always gets me. <sighs> So yeah, you would have been five years old when the badges, the mushrooms, and the snakes was uh, <laughs> its rounds on the interwebs. That that was. I'm pretty sure that was before YouTube. Like. Yeah, it sure was. The time before YouTube was a time some would consider to be unnatural. Unnat liminal, even.
zero zero one. No, not. Wow, I'm so high up. <laughs> I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> Also, why is this music so spooky? Stars. I got the map of the residence. Is that's what this is? <laughs> The residence. Is it perhaps an evil residence? <laughs> Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Talking to yourself? You all right? What's gotten into you? I'm getting you worried, aren't I? But don't, I'm all right. I guess this creepy mansion has gotten to my nerves. Anyway, I think I'll go outside, get some fresh air for a change. Don't worry, I'm just going to get some fresh air. If I'm lucky, I'll get to waste some monsters along the way. Plant 42 report. <clears throat> Four days have passed since the accident. The plant at point 42 is growing at an amazing rate. Although there are many unknown aspects about this plant, we know that in comparison to the other group of plants, the T-virus has had a substantially stronger effect on this one. The T-virus has drastically morphed its host anatomy as well as its size. Looking into a cur its current state, it's difficult to imagine its original appearance. Nowhere on Earth will you find anything like it. It keeps demanding, feed me, Seymour. <laughs> We've also found that Plant 42 has two main sources of acquiring its necessary nutrients. One source is through its root. Somehow it has rooted itself down into the basement. 
Immediately after the accident, a scientist went mad and destroyed the aqua ring. Ever since, the basement has been uh, the basement has been like a pool. There's a high possibility that it's one of the chemicals in the water that's promoting the Plant 42's rapid growth. However, we have yet to determine the specific chemical. It's just chemicals. A bulb-like body of the Plant 42 has been sighted hanging from the ceiling on the first floor. We are sure that it uses the air ducts to reach the first floor. Numerous long tentacle-like vines are protruding from the bulb. We believe the vines are the second means of acquiring its nutrients. When the plant 42 senses prey, it uses the tentacle-like vines to capture its prey. After doing so, suckers on the, fine, on the vine drain the prey of its blood. Uh, pour one out for vine. We've also <laughs> noticed that it has some intelligence. When it captures its prey, or when it's inactive, the vines twine around the doors to stop possible intruders. Unfortunately, several of our scientists have already fallen victim to this Plant 42. When we heard the stories from the survivors, they all observed one thing in common. When the uniform petal-like flaps open and reveal its vital internals, it has a tendency to become more aggressive. One witness reports that it was as if it was trying to protect itself. Why it behaves this way, the way it does, is still unknown. May 21st, 1998. Henry Sarton. Henry Sarton. What a guy. Hi, handsome. Yeah. All I know is that with Martha Penn's radish, we're going to win the couple of the Jean. The couple of the Jean. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he fixed it. That Bubs is a computer genius. <laughs> Let's do a little dance for the Bubs. <gasps> Licorice. You gonna tell him? You gonna knock over my Legos with your tail? Yeah. Hi, handsome. Yeah, what's up? Hi, baby boy. Hello. Who's my handsome man? Hi there. Oh, it's licorice. Oh, bark. Hi, handsome. Yeah. Has dad not given you enough attention? Is that the problem? <laughs> oh, so sad. Yeah. Tell him. Hi, dude. This bathroom is so moist. Hmm. Water's leaking. You should get that fixed. Damn it. Damn. Fuck. <gasps> oh, look at this. Oh. Hyperspace. Hyperspace. Yeah. Tell him. <laughs> Yo, handsome. <laughs> Why do you have a shotgun? Why don't you have a shotgun? Why wouldn't I have a shotgun? Hi, handsome. Hello. Hmm. Well, Dave. Looks How thick. are you feeling? Um. I mean, if you feel like calling it there, we can call it there. That's pretty good. That's not a bad spot. Yeah. You tell him. Yeah. Oh, handsome. Yeah. All right. Oh. Goodbye, people of the earth. Deuces all. <laughs>